Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095 Basic Algebra. In this video, we're going to look at sections 11.7, which also incorporates 7.6a, the first part of 7.6. Now, the first thing we're going to review is adding fractions. We know how to add fractions. If we add fractions with a common denominator, we can just add the numerators over that denominator. But there are going to be times, especially when working with polynomials, where we have some division, essentially just fractions. When we have polynomials with fractions, we call these rational expressions, where we have maybe an x in a denominator. So sometimes we'll have to employ a tool where we take something like this and we actually split it up. We work it backwards. So if I can write a common denominator for one of them, I can also split it up. Oh back to its different terms. This term plus that term is this single term. And we can work it backwards to get the same thing we started with. Well, here, if we're looking at a polynomial with division, rational expressions, we just have maybe some uh, polynomial in the denominator. And here, we have a monomial. So this is monomial division. Well, <clears throat> what we see here is very similar to this. We want to break it up. So what I can say is each of these terms is divided by 5x squared. If we think about it um, when we had uh, distribution, we multiplied it to each term. Well, this is a form of distribution, except it's not multiplication. We're dividing each term. So I can split this up to be the first term has to be divided by my denominator. And the next term, this negative. 5x squared, so I have negative 5x squared, has to be divided by this denom or, yeah, denominator. And then the last term, that positive 10x, has to be divided by x squared. So to divide by a monomial, we can just break it up to each term and simplify using our rules of exponents and all the rules that we've learned before. 15 over 5 is 3. x cubed over x squared is x. Here I have minus 5x squared over 5x squared. Well, anything divided by itself is 1. If we can recognize that, that's a shortcut. Or we could just reduce it one piece at a time. 5 over 5 is 1. x squared over x squared is 1. 1 times 1 is 1, a negative 1. And then here, if we reduce this, well, 10 over 5 is 2. And x over x squared, well, if we just cancel one of the x's, we could think of it that way, there'd still be an x in the denominator. Or if we use our rules of exponents, 1 minus 2 would be a negative 1. Well, that negative tells me I need its reciprocal. Put it in the denominator, 2 over x. So if we reduce that, 1x remains in the denominator. So I did the division of this simply by splitting it up by its terms, dividing by a monomial results in 3x minus 1 plus 2 over x. So <clears throat> let's look at one more example. Here we have 4y squared plus 12x squared y squared minus 4xy. And I want to divide all of that by minus 4xy. Now, I could rewrite it with each term over this. But as a shortcut, I'm just going to simplify these terms individually. It's kind of skipping a step. And hopefully, you understand the process. So the first term, 4 over a negative 4, is going to be a negative 1. And I'm not going to write the 1, just the negative sign. A y squared on top with a y on the bottom would reduce to just a single y. But there's still that x in the denominator. It didn't cancel in that term. So that's the first term. I've dealt with it. The next term, I say, well, 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. Oh. And then I move on to the x's. x squared over x, quotient rule 2 minus 1 is just 1. I have 1x remaining, or I reduce this by 1. Same thing with the y. y squared with a y, it would simplify to just y. Now notice, nothing in the denominator. That's very similar to the last example we looked at. And here, we have negative 4 over negative 4. Well, that's a positive 1. x over x reduces to 1. y over y reduces to 1. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. Just because they're the same terms, we can't think of them as just canceling. We have to think of them as reducing to 1. And you see, we get negative y over x minus 3xy 
plus 1. And I didn't show much work here, but hopefully you conceptually understand that. Otherwise, you can write this over that and simplify it, this over that, and simplify it, this over that, and simplify it. So with practice, you'll be able to do it just like that. All right. Let's move on. We're going to review long division, because sometimes it's a tool that we need to divide polynomials. They're not always going to be divided by a monomial. Sometimes it might be a binomial or something larger. So if we look at this, we're just going to review division. When I want to divide a number by a divisor, the first thing I look at is, what do I have to do to this to get it as close to this spot right here, the leading term? Well, it doesn't go into the leading term, so I have to incorporate this term here, or this place, I should say, the tens place. What times 6 would get me as close as possible to this without going over? Well, I know 30 is a factor, or a, uh, yeah, a multiple of 6, which would be 5. So I go 5 times 6 is 30. Then I find the difference. The difference is going to be 4. 4 minus 0, 3 minus 3. Now, when I get to here, I bring down the next term. What can I multiply by 6 to get as close to this value as possible? Well, I know that 7 times 6 would be 42, but seven times, or 6 times 8 would be 48. 48 is too much. I can't go past this. So it's 7 times 6. 7 times 6 is going to give me that 42 I didn't go over. And then when I find the difference, 6 minus 2 is 4. There's nothing left to bring down. So this is a remainder. Now, when we do polynomial division, we're not going to use decimals here. We're going to use remainders. So let's use this remainder. This would be 4 over the divisor, right? our remainder over the divisor. 4 over 6 would reduce to 2 thirds. So we have a remainder. 57 and 2 thirds is the uh, quotient of this division. All right. Let's see how that applies to division of polynomials when we're dividing by a binomial. Now, we have x cubed plus 8 divided by x plus 2. When we rewrite this, we have to have our polynomials in standard form, which means descending order. But each power or each degree of the term has to have a placeholder, just like we had the hundreds place the tens place, and the ones place. They have to have a placeholder. So my first term is x cubed. I don't have any x squared, so I write it in there as a placeholder. I don't have any single x terms, so there are 0 of them. And then I have my constant, so it's in descending order. And if I write it by my divisor, x plus 2 is going to divide into this, I treat it just like long division at this point. What would I have to multiply x by? to get x cubed. It would be x squared. So the reason why I needed this placeholder is because I have to line up my values. If we look back at this, this was the tens place. My first digit went into the tens place. It was 57. Well, my first term is the x squared. It has to go in the x squared place. And that's why we needed those placeholders. So uh, let's back up for a moment. What did I have to multiply by x to get it as close to x cubed as possible? I have to multiply it by x squared. And now, just like we did 5 times 6 to get that 30, we're going to do x squared times this quantity. And we're going to put it here. x squared times x is x cubed. And x squared times 2 is 2x squared. Now, just like we found this value, we then subtracted it. And this is where we have to be careful, because we don't want to make a sign error. I am subtracting that whole quantity, just like I subtracted that whole quantity. So I have to distribute this negative. So it's x cubed minus x cubed. And a good sign that you did it correctly is this term will always be 0. It will always cancel out. So x cubed minus x cubed is 0. 0 x is squared minus 2x's squared is negative 2x's squared. Now, just like we did before, we brought down the next digit. Well, here we're bringing down the next term. And then I look at this value, just like I did here. What do I have to multiply by 6 to get 46? Well, what do I have to multiply by x to get negative 2x squared? Well, I have to multiply by negative 2 
x. Negative 2x times x would give me that negative 2x squared. Then I do that distribution. Negative 2x times x is negative 2x squared. Negative 2x times 2 is negative 4x. Now, just like before, I have to subtract that value. And you can see we got lots of negatives, so we want to be careful. If I think about it this way, I can distribute it, which is going to change those signs. Now, I don't have to worry about it because I distributed it. Negative 2x squared plus 2x squared, no more 2x squared. It's 0, 0x zero squared. This term should always cancel out. And then I have 0x plus 4x is 4x. Now, we have one last term. We bring that down. So you see we're bringing our terms down after each step. And then I look at this and say, what do I have to multiply by x? to get 4x. Well, if I multiply it by 4, 4 times x will give me that 4x. Now I can do that distribution. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 2 is 8. Now that's a good sign. If I find their difference, 4x minus 4x, no more. This term always cancels. But this term, 8 minus 8, is also 0. There's nothing left to bring down, but this value is 0. That tells me that there is no remainder. This polynomial was evenly divisible by that polynomial. No remainder. All right, so I have this example here, 6x cubed plus x squared plus 1. And we, hopefully we recognize there's a placeholder missing. And we also have a placeholder missing here. Both of them have to have their placeholders. This would be x squared. 0x's minus 1. So x squared plus 0x's minus 1. I want you to try this one yourself. Get that practice. Make sure you have your placeholders and do that division. If you need to, refer back to that. All right. For this one, we're going to do a different method. We're going to use something called synthetic division. Now, the only time we can use synthetic division is when our divisor is of the form x minus some number c. Now, since it's x minus the number, that tells me the opposite of the number. Well, when I look in here and I see x minus 3, it says the opposite of 3. Well, what's the opposite of 3? Negative 3. And that's what I have there. So this says x and the opposite of the number I see. I see a negative 3. Its opposite is 3. So that's one thing you want to look for. Is this a binomial of first degree and a constant, x minus a number? All right, and then you take the opposite of what you see in there. If this was x plus 3, I'd write a negative 3 here. Take the opposite. And I'll explain in a moment why we do that. Now, to do synthetic division, and synthetic division just says, you know, it's kind of a shortcut method. We just look at this and take the coefficients in descending order. The coefficient of the cube term is 1, of the squared term is negative 4, of the first power term is 2, and the constant is negative 5. That is just the setup for synthetic division. To do synthetic division, you essentially bring down the first coefficient, 1. And then you multiply. 3 times 1 is 3. So I'll just draw some arrows. 3 times that value. We're multiplying. We put the value up here. And then we add them, negative 4 plus 3. Now, the reason why we're adding is because we already changed the sign. When we did division before, we always subtracted. Well, now, because we already changed the sign, we can add. Less chance of making a sign error. So negative 4 and 3 is a negative 1. And now I multiply again, just like I did here, 3 times negative 1 negative 3. And then I add these. 2 plus a negative 3 is a negative 1. And then I multiply again. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And I add these. Negative 5 plus a negative 3 is a negative 8. There's nothing left to bring down. This tells me, because it's not 0, the last term, it wasn't evenly divisible, which means I'll have a remainder. Now, what are my x values here? If I'm supposed to be making a polynomial, I need to have these x values. Well, let's just for a moment take the leading terms. I took a term of third degree, x cubed, 
And I divided it by a term of first degree, x. x cubed over x would reduce to x squared. This is my leading term. So I can just put it in there, 1x squared minus x, because it's in descending order, minus 1, our constant, minus this value. Well, this value is the remainder. And when we've seen in our example of normal division, when we have a remainder, we place it over our divisor, which was x minus 3. So let's rewrite what we have here. We have x squared minus an x minus 1 minus 8 over x minus 3. This is our solution. Now, the first time you see synthetic division or do synthetic division, it might be a little, a little scary and it's something new. So we, we're going to do another example, but don't be intimidated by it. With some practice, you'll see, well, hopefully you'll see, there's less chance of making sign errors because we're not subtracting several quantities all at once. Let's look at this example here. We'll do synthetic division one more time, and then I'll give you an example to try on your own. Here we have x cubed plus 1 divided by x plus 1. Is this of the form x minus c? Well, x minus what number would give me x plus 1? Well, this tells me I have to take the opposite of what's in there. x minus a negative 1 would simplify to x plus 1. It's always the opposite of what you see in there because it's of the form x minus c. So I know my c value. And now I can say, OK, what are my coefficients? Just like in normal polynomial division, we have to have placeholders. x cubed plus 1, well, where's my x squared? Where's my x? I have to have a placeholder. So my coefficient of the leading term is 1. There are no x squares. There are no x's. But there is a constant. Now, if I do this uh, synthetic division, I just always bring down the first term. And then I multiply. Negative 1 times 1, negative 1. Combine. 0 and negative 1 is negative 1. Multiply. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. 0 and 1 is 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. That's a great sign. That means that this is evenly divisible. There is no remainder. So what I can do is I can think about it. I took x cubed, and I divided it by an x term. This would reduce to x squared. That is my leading term, x squared minus 1x plus my constant of 1. Now, all these coefficients of 1 aren't necessary, so I just rewrite it. No remainder, it, I got myself a trinomial here. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to attempt synthetic division using 3x squared plus x minus 2 being divided by x plus 1. Now, just like we had x plus 1 there, what is your c value? Remember, when you see it of this form, x and a number, always take the opposite of that number. So try this one for yourself. This has been section 11.7, which incorporates 7.6a. Thank you for watching.